July 16, 1945. This is an important date, but I don't know if it's a bad day or a good day. So what is this day? We'll find out throughout the video. This is the day where the first atomic bomb was tested in New Mexico. This is the time where World War II is ending and new wars are just beginning. The war of ideology between capitalism and communism was lifting off. If you put this type of tension between two powerful nations, you'll know that it starts off with tension, but in the end, it will always lead to an insane never-ending war. But this time was different. A war was no joke because the US had the atomic bomb and the Soviets were building their own. And the Nazi scientists were helping out the Soviets build this atomic bomb as soon as possible. Right now we know that there was never a direct war between the USSR and the US and the main reason was the atomic bomb. If there were no atomic bombs, these two superpowers would go at it and basically destroy the world. We want to create a theory. The atomic bomb is not made and it will never be made. Let's see what will happen in the world. It is true that two atomic bombs were used in Japan and it's the only place that was attacked with such weapon. But Japan was gonna be defeated either way, with or without the atomic bomb, but it would have taken a lot longer. Before the US attacked Japan with the atomic bomb, they were getting beat in the Pacific Ocean. At the same time, Soviets had just beaten Germany and the Red Army was a free agent. And after the US, the biggest enemy to Japan was the USSR. And if the atomic bomb was not made and the US could not defeat Japan, the Red Army would join the war against Japan. The US attacked Japanese soil, the Japanese surrendered, and the USSR didn't have a chance to attack Japan like they did to Korea. And this is the exact reason why Japan is only in control of the US and not Russia. The main people behind the war, like General Tojo Hideki, was executed. But the US saw Hirohito, the Emperor of Japan, wasn't really in charge of the war or wasn't the decision maker. And that's why he was allowed to stay Emperor. And he continued to be Emperor until the year 1989, where he died at the age of 87. The Americans didn't change the culture for the Japanese. You guys are capitalists but you can run your own country, but you're not allowed to have a proper army like before. And that is why to this day, the Japanese army is under the US army. And that shows who's been in control all these years. The Soviets would see what is happening and see Japan is in the US hands, but they didn't have the guts to start a war because the Americans had the atomic bomb and they didn't. And that is why they were really trying to build the atomic bomb so they would be a superpower too. And eventually, in 1949, the Soviet atomic bomb was ready to go, and the fear between the superpowers were equal now. After this, they were terrified of each other, and that's exactly why they never declared war on each other. They would take the war into other land, like the Korean Peninsula. The US entered from the south, the Soviets from the north. After three years of war and destroying a lot of lives and the land, they cut Korea in half and they told them to figure it out for themselves. And it's good to know that to this day, after 72 years, there's still a war between these two countries. The war between the superpowers went everywhere in the world. After this, they started to have issues in Cuba. Vietnam was in shambles for 19 years. The Russians from the north and the Americans from the south and the poor people were suffering in between these two. And after 19 years, the US leaves and Vietnam turns into a communist country. The CIA had a very important job and one of those was to find countries that need 
a little capitalism in there. This was their idea of spreading the ideology of capitalism. But the KGB and the communists did the same exact thing in other countries. Unlike the Middle East, where most countries were very anti-communism, but in South America, there was a lot of communist people. You guys already know Cuba. They were one of the most important allies to the USSR, right next to the US. But let's get to the main point. We wanted to see if the atomic bomb was not invented, what would happen? Let's imagine these two superpowers have no atomic bomb. They have two ideologies that are a complete opposite of each other and they hate each other's guts. As we said, no atomic bombs. And that's truly unfortunate because you know what will happen. World War III. Experts say if there were no atomic weapons, World War III would begin right after World War II. Even though superpowers don't have atomic bombs, but they have powerful armies. And with those weapons, they would destroy the world. If you know about World War I, you know that the war ended, but the fire sat underneath the ashes, and that's why the war began again. If these two superpowers beat each other to death and get tired, after a few years they will get ready again and begin another world war. World War V, World War VI, they will kill the entire Earth's population and keep on fighting. If there was no atomic bomb, the USSR would never accept the west of Europe to stay on the Western Bloc. And that is why they would begin the war in East Germany. At that time, there will be no Europe. Paris would be over, London destroyed, and other big cities in Europe. And for the third time in a row, just because of being far from the battle, the US will stay safe, and that means Europe is going to get destroyed for the third time. If these wars were to happen, in the end, the Soviets were the true losers. Because at the end of World War II, the most lost life in a country was in Russia. They lost more than 20 million people at that time. And that was in a way where they gave any young man a weapon and told him to go to battle. They had so many men on the battlefield that some of them didn't even have a weapon. And that's why they would tell the soldier to walk behind this guy. When he gets shot and killed, pick up his weapon and start fighting. If you see the lives lost between the Russians and the Germans, you'll see that the Russians lost seven times the Germans. And that's why they say if the war continued, the Soviets were gonna lose. They didn't have proper strategy and they were running out of young men. But let's say in World War III, they defeat the USSR. It might seem like the war is over, but the next generation would start the war all over again. When you look at history and see the wars between civilization, they were all like this. Do you know what's the longest war between two civilizations? It's the war between the Persians and the Romans, and it lasted more than 700 years. When they would have a war, one of them would back up, but after a few years they would get themselves ready and have another war. These two empires fought each other for so long that the Arabs basically came north and destroyed both of them. The Persian-Roman Wars began in 92 BC and it went all the way to the year 627. And even though the empires changed in Iran, but the wars continued. But in the modern era, the atomic bomb was very important and it basically put a break on wars. But wars is very common in the world. But a war between two superpowers will not happen because of atomic bomb. Just like we said, there have been smaller wars like Iran and Iraq war, the Afghanistan war, the Iraq war and a lot of others. 
The atomic bomb were very good for superpower, even though they have been in wars, but it took it out of their area, and it took it elsewhere. We're not saying the atomic bomb is a good thing, but that just being there has helped the world a little bit. And if it was not here, we would be on World War 14. If not 14, maybe World War 9. What do you guys think?